I've been driving from the coast inland through the desert for hours, and I have to say, the landscape and the view, it just hasn't changed at all. It's this unbelievably dry, barren, reddish rock. It's like being on Mars. The driest place on Earth, unbelievably there are areas here that haven't seen rain in 500 years. And this desert is also battered by strong winds from the Andes, extreme temperatures and frequent earthquakes. But what it does have is huge, unpolluted skies, making it the perfect place for the European Southern Observatory. And I'm here to see where the astronomers call home. Now, in this unbelievably hot, staggeringly dry, harsh landscape, somewhere there's a 108 bedroom hotel for all the scientists who want to peer at these wonderful skies. But I tell you what, it's so well camouflaged, you'd hardly even know it was there. Oh, my word. Look at that. This is the Esso Hotel, possibly the remotest hotel on the planet. It's a super tough, quite brutal building, just like the landscape. And that's no surprise. At over 2,500 metres above sea level, almost everything needed to build this structure had to be brought in, even the water to mix the concrete. So to build a building in this location, it's unbelievable. As if designing and constructing this hotel wasn't difficult enough, there was another astonishing requirement the architect had to meet. Because those telescopes up there are so sensitive to light at night, they don't want any light pollution. So this building, which, remember, is 108 bedrooms, 176 metres long, is not allowed to emit more artificial light than a single 100-watt light bulb. That is amazing. From the outside, this brutalist structure blends perfectly within its arid surroundings. But once inside... ..it's a different story. I wasn't expecting that. Look at it, it's green. And here, it's the most wonderful oasis of tranquility and calm. And I'll tell you what, it gives you respite and relief from the heat outside. This magnificent garden is flooded with light, and the humidity in here is a comfortable 35%, compared to the super dry 5% outside, allowing these succulent plants to thrive. But before you plan to book in, this hotel is only open to scientists working at the Paranal Observatory. This bit of this might look like a health spa, but it's not. It's a monastery to stargazing. Now, here in the middle of the country is Chile's Goldilocks zone. It's not too hot, it's not too cold, it's just right. Perfect, in fact, for growing grapes. But it's not just the quality of the Cabernet Sauvignon, Merlot or Carmignare grape varieties that makes this place so hard to ignore. Because the passion that turns these into amazing wines overflows into the design of the wineries themselves. Just take a look at this. This is Closa Palta one of a growing number of Chilean vineyards out to make a statement in the world of wine and design. Now we're right on top of the entire building. And the architecture is very powerful here because you're surrounded by these 
24 sections of huge timber. They're like, this, like the staves of a wine barrel. And the relevance of the 24 is that it takes 24 months to make the wine here. The barrel shaped outside is only a fraction of this six level, 4,600 square meter winery. As the majority of the building runs 35 meters deep underground. So this is really where all the magic begins. And the grapes are brought in and it stays in these barrels fermenting for around 30 days. And what a beautiful space for this to happen. The fermenting room is the only level that has natural daylight. But despite all the windows, the architects had an ingenious solution for temperature control. It's actually mirrored glass, and it's bouncing as much of the heat from outside back out away from the wine. But I've been told that the further you go down, it gets colder and colder. Building into the rock of the hillside acts as a natural form of air conditioning, ideal for keeping the maturing wine at the perfect temperature. Just look at this incredible staircase. It goes six levels from the terrace at the top all the way to where the wine is finished at the bottom. It digs all the way into the mountainside. Building deep into the ground has a second benefit for the wine. By using gravity instead of air-driven pumps to move the wine from one location to the next, it reduces the risk of the wine being spoiled by oxidization. On the floor below is the first of two aging processes, where the wine will rest in oak barrels for up to a year. And we are very much underground here. No natural light in this beautiful cavernous space. And just look at that ceiling. You've got vaults clad in the Chilean hardwood on this cruciform plan, the perfect cross underground. It took the builders five years to blast through the rock to create these immense underground spaces. It's so beautiful. And so it should be, because this is the end of the process, really, before the wine's bottled. It looks more like a piece of sculpture than a house. Now, I'm trying to work out which one's the front door because there's lots of hinges and bolts, but I think that's a, that's a shutter. That's a window, not a door. Now this one's got a little lock on it. Oh yeah, it's a door with a handle and everything. But if you've solved the key to getting through the front door, you'll be rewarded with a beautiful interior. And what a space this is. And this is all about the horizontal. Even the windows there at the end, it's just a band of fantastic glazing to frame the sea and the landscape. It's stunning. and the centerpiece of this lower block was worth coming all the way to Chile to see. This space is absolute genius. You've got a courtyard space right in the middle of the plan. I love courtyard spaces. I adore them, in fact. And this is one of the best I've ever seen. Because when you come downstairs, you just, you think this is an internal space with glass walls around it, but it's not. It's an external space. Big fire and the smoke goes up there. Up through one of the concrete boxes. Now the architects don't want to call it a chimney. They think that's too obvious, but it is a chimney. 
it's just a massive one. <laughs> and then you come back inside from the courtyard. You can't really call this a corridor. And you've got concrete, concrete, hang on a minute, timber. And I think I know why. Because in here, is the bedroom. And then, you open this up. Now, it doesn't get much better than that. The architects placed all the key rooms for the house on this floor and built the third monolithic tower for guests. And on closer inspection, it also opens up to the stunning landscape. And the bedrooms are not big at all. Look, it's a very narrow concrete box, this. But you can get out of bed and just fall in love with that view. This building is brave, simple and elegant, designed to reflect the rugged yet poetic beauty of its surroundings. And there's one more surprise. They've got a roof terrace. This concrete block is all about just going to the next level, view. Next level, view. Top of the block on the roof terrace, view. <laughs> 